So we have an economic meltdown that's happening right now, and guess what? The housing market is leading the way. So welcome to Housing Bubble 2.0 News of the Week, or as I like to call it, their episode of As the Housing Market Turns. Today is December the 27th. Randy Patrick here putting their realism back in real estate. Hope everyone had a great Christmas break. I know some people are suffering through a lot of travel delays across the country, a lot of cold, a lot of snow, a lot of closures, etc., with roads and issues out there with travel and uh, just the snow and all that. So again, I, my thoughts go out to everybody who's out there. That's why I live down here uh, from in Florida as opposed to where I'm from up in the Great White North. So anyway, uh, let's get into it right now. So I think the neat thing about what's happening is we all know that the housing market is changing. We all know and see that the economy is changing and things are are sort of starting to crap out now, starting to hit rock bottom. So we're not even there yet. So uh, today actually is, and since Tuesday, it's the last Tuesday of the month, and that means Case-Shiller. So the Case-Shiller data came out today, and U.S. home prices tumbled for the fourth straight month in October. So you can see that actually happening right now. Um, that's a little, little uh, let me just silence my phone here. That actually is a little bit of a chart from, um, you can see from uh, Zero Hedge there. If you take a look at it, um, you know, basically Miami, Tampa, Charlotte reported the highest year over year gain among the 20 cities. And bear in mind that a lot of the gains in Miami and Tampa were crypto driven. So brace for those to catch down to San Francisco's rally soon enough. And we talk about San Francisco, it pretty much is at zero right now, which is interesting. So let's go right into Case Shiller and we'll tie up with the rest of the economic stuff here because it does all work together. So obviously, um, you know, National Home Price Index came in. Uh, ultimately, uh, the 20s, you know, we're looking at a um, ooh, just basically a 9.2 annual gain in October down from the 10.7 the previous month. That's across the board. As I mentioned, Miami, Tampa and Charlotte were the, had the highest year-over-year -year gains, but we can see that stuff is actually really slowing down now. So it's funny enough, like the year-over-year -year gains are, you know, used to be double-digit plus. Now we're seeing a lot of the, the majority of the locations drop into single digits now, and they're starting to get lower and lower. So ultimately, you know, um, you know, the fourth consecutive month of declining home prices, Despite, you know, lots of regional differences across the board, October's best cities were, were Miami, Tampa, Charlotte, Atlanta. Um, we have um, the weakest performers were, were San Francisco and Seattle because uh, they hit their peaks much earlier in the year. As the Federal Reserve continues to move rent interest, rate, interest rates higher, mortgage financing continues to be a headwind for home prices, given the continuing prospects for a challenging macroeconomic environment, prices may well continue to weaken. So... With respect to Case Shiller, please realize that we're talking about October data. Yes, here we are. It's the end of uh, December. It's almost the end of the year. Case Shiller do, does run about two months behind just because of the complexity of the calculation and then how it's done. It's based on sales pairs. So that's why uh, it's not like NAR or other people who are producing data the very next month. Uh, it's, it's a little more, uh, we'll call it a little more difficult to calculate takes more time so we're always two months in behind but again we kind of know where things were and where they're going to be it's no surprise here as time goes on so again even though we you know it, it's i guess you could say finally on record saying october was a bad month and or not a bad month but you know, starting we're seeing four months of declines now expect november to be the same december to be the same as we go into 2023 so it's going to keep going down so essentially, <clears throat> you can see that the case Shiller indices, there's, tw there's three indices, the 10 city composite index, the 20 city, and the national index. Well, you can take a look at there's three different lines there, the thin line, the thick line, and the dotted the hash line. So you can see where it's been, where it's gone, and that you can see that it's dropping fairly exponentially. So it, it you know, sort of 2019 to 2020 to 2021, it kind of was up exponentially, and you can see it's coming down in 2022 now, the drop is a pretty steep curve, and that's the annual, like the year-over-year -year per month annual increases. So that's starting to slow down big time. If we take a look at the long-term Case Shiller graph, obviously you can see where they plotted it. Um, really, they started doing this back in, in you know a few year, number of years ago, based on the last housing crisis. They've gone back in time. We can see that 2006 was the housing peak from the previous housing boom. We know that 2012 was the trough. With the housing crash, we can see how we were on a higher linear rate, and then obviously 2019, 
20 came in, we went kind of exponential. But if you take a top, the top right part of the graph, we now have you know, three, four months now of the change. So you can see the peak, and now that it's quickly gone from the peak, it's sliding down now. So, you know, it's, it's again, it's still early on, but, you know, this is proof positive that the market is changing and things now are going in the opposite direction. When we take a look at the overall where we've been from the last housing market, housing boom, crash, etc., um, we can see that, you know, July 2006 was the peak, February 2012 was the, the trough, and where we are today, we are 62% still above the 2006 peak. So even though people would go, well, it's still, you know, we still have a lot of increases, we have, but realize that that's going down now. So at the peak, peak, peak of, of where we are today, like, you know, 2022, we were about 68% above the peak. So we've pretty much dropped a little over almost, you know, 5 to 6% from, from, you know, where our peak, peak was a little while ago on this sort of National City Index. So it is starting to slide. You know, it, you're going to say, what's a few percentage points? Well, it is immaterial right now, but... It's just illustrating what's going on. And again, this is reflecting of October data. We know that, you know, based on a lot of other pieces of information, like, you know, um, you know, I guess you say um, pending home sales, mortgage rate, stuff like that. We know that, you know, sales activity is down for uh, November. Sales activity is down for December. And are we, we know that there's more price uh, breaks going on, more price decreases. We know that there's a lot of cancellations going on. So, you know, again, the trend is going the other way now. It's been going the way for a few months. This is just confirming as it catches up that the trend's going the other way. So I uh, want to take a look at the 20 city. Everybody wants to check this out. So this is the year-over-year -year percent change, uh, you know, for each of the top 20 cities in the Metro Index. Atlanta was up 14.9%. Boston, 7.6%. Charlotte, 15%. Chicago, 8.9%. Cleveland, Ohio, 87 Dallas, 135 Denver, 79 Detroit, 7%. Vegas, 94 LA, 66 Miami, leading the pack with a 21% year-over-year increase. Minneapolis, 59 New York, 93 Phoenix, not only 9.6%. Remember, Phoenix was the darling of the case Schiller you know, having, you know, leading the Case Shiller 20 City Composite Index for about 30 some odd months in a row before Tampa and Miami took it over. Uh, and they've gone from, you know, a 30% year over year increase to now we're looking at just under 10% now. So it's coming down. Portland, 5.4%. San Diego, 7.5%. San Fran, the biggest loser here, just 0.6% year over year price change. So San Francisco is, is basically kind of plateauing. Well, not plateau, it's going down now, and, and it, it looks like as it continues, it's going to be the first city to go into the negative. It's actually going to start losing value across the board. Seattle's only 4.5%. Tampa, 20.5%. Washington, 6.0%. So that's your top 20 locations. Take a look at it. One, two, three, four, only five uh, of, the, of the, you know, so really, you know, 25% of the top 20 markets across the country here. Um, have had double-digit appreciation this past month or the month of October. Everybody else was below 10%. And you can see the low point of San Francisco being 0.6%. So the point being, remember, we would this, this all these were double digits back a few months ago. Now we're seeing some very radical changes, which, you know, clearly indicates, even though this is a lag, a lag type, um, you know, uh, statistic and how it's reported, things are changing big time in the marketplace. So, guys, if you enjoy the kind of information I produce on a weekly basis, if you do me a favor and smash that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate that. For those of you who think you're subscribers, if you can reaffirm and hit the subscription button again because I'm losing subscribers on, you know, like I've been maintaining, which means I'm putting on the same amount as I'm losing or even losing more. So please help my channel maintain and grow. I do appreciate that. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. So I saw this today. It's 15 facts which prove that a massive economic meltdown is already happening now. Now, for people who are in tune with housing and the retail world and economics and, um, you know, price points <laughs> and basically life, I guess you could say, it's been a very difficult year. Things are changing. The economy is poor. Interest rates are up. People are having a hard time making ends meet. So this should not come as any surprise to anyone where we're at today. So ultimately what they're doing is they're saying that economic conditions just keep getting worse. Uh, as we prepare to enter 2023, we find ourselves in a high inflation environment. At the same time, the economic activity is really slowing down. 
Just like we witnessed in 2008, employers are conducting mass layoffs as a horrifying housing crash sweeps across the nations. Those that have been waiting for the U.S. economy to implode can stop waiting because an economic implosion has already officially arrived. So interesting enough, that's the thought process on that. So let's go to the next slide here. So this is the 15 reasons why um, you know we're, we're we're having these situations, economic meltdowns happening. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know when I opened the video, it's that and housing is leading the way. All right, as I always mention, the housing market, the real estate market, is a significant contributor to the GDP, the gross domestic product across the country. It's usually over 20%. It's not just housing sales; it's construction, leasing, um, you know, all the sub. sub activities that go along with it like you know when you take a look at buying houses or selling houses or making houses you know the stuff that, that's connected to it's quite large and quite vast so when the housing market uh, starts hurting it hurts a lot of the overall economy so again so this is the top you know the 15 reasons why we're going to have an economic meltdown or it's already here existing home sales have now fallen for 10 consecutive months that's certainly based on the NAR information for national Association of realtors existing home sales are down 34 5.4 percent over the last 12 months that is the largest year-over-year -year decline in the existing home sales since the collapse of Lehman Brothers. So Lehman Brothers kind of goes down in history as a turning point in the last you know, financial crisis we had in 2008. So when Lehman you know, closed its doors, it's kind of like all, heck or all hell broke loose. So that's the issue. So really, that seems to be a benchmark as, you know, since the Lehman Brothers. Okay? Home builder sentiment has now dropped for 12 consecutive months. Now, to go along with that home buyer sentiment, is at record lows as well. Home construction costs have risen more than 30% since the beginning of 2022. So you're actually going to see uh, some articles that go out saying, yeah, lumber costs have gone down. Well, lumber costs have gone down, but other costs have gone up. So either way, you know, you're still paying a premium to build a house. The number of single family housing permits has fallen for nine months in a row. That basically means no people are no longer buying new construction homes because of various reasons, as we all know, price point, cost, uh, materials, interest rates. So, of course, if nobody's buying, the builders aren't uh, actually uh, applying for permits to start the construction process. Um, the Empire State Manufacturing Index has plunged to a reading of negative 11.2 in December. That figure is way, way below expectations. In November, we witnessed the largest decline in retail sales that we have seen all year long. Even with the holiday shopping and, you know, the whole um, sales on Friday and Cyber Monday, etc., I mean, still low. Um, even the biggest names on Wall Street are starting to let workers go. In fact, it's being reported that Goldman Sachs will soon lay off approximately 4,000 employees. That's just Wall Street and one group, Goldman Sachs. We know that uh, in the real estate industry, we've had um, places like Zillow and Redfin and other locations or other groups, Open Door, all the I buyers, they've either shut down or tried to sell um, their properties. They've closed up uh, their eye buying. We've had you know other you know mortgage lenders who have shut doors or have laid off thousands of people across the board. So when the real estate market slows, you can see that there's a domino or trickle down effect that affects a lot of people uh, along the way. The Federal Reserve is admitting that the number of actual jobs in the United States has been overstated by over a million. So of course, you know, when you take a look at you know consumer price index and the inflation, all that type of thing, it's like, who do you believe now? Okay, um, yeah. So we've been overstating actual um, employment by a significant number. U.S. job cuts were 417 percent higher in November than they were the same month a year ago. A recent, a recent Wall Street Journal survey found that approximately two thirds of all Americans expect the economy to get even worse next year. So we're not even at rock bottom yet. A newly released Bloomberg survey has discovered 70% of U.S. economists believe that a recession is coming in 2023. Well, I, I love the way that's discussed, like, you know, a recession is coming. Well, aren't we already in a recession? I think, that, you know, from a lot of the real economists or analysts out there say that, financial analysts, that you have to have two months of or two quarters of negative GDP to be in a recession. So I think we already have that. But either way, if you wanted to go on the narrative, a recession is coming. Um, this kills me now. Inflation continues to spiral wildly out of control. At this point, a head of lettuce now costs $11 at one grocery store in California. So if you didn't want to move out of California yet, maybe you want to move out now because lettuce is going to cost you way too much. Overall, vegetable prices in the U.S. are more than 80% higher than they were this time last year. And thanks to the rapid rising costs of living, 63% of the U.S. population is now living paycheck to paycheck, which is pretty scary to think about it. And the you know, cost of living is what? It's 
car loans. It's gas. It's heating for you know fuel and oil to heat your home. It's basic you know survival things: food, doctor, medicine, whatever. Everything is more expensive. Obviously, you know over the Christmas holidays you shop for gifts. You shop for you know food. To, you know for having family and friends over, etc. You know I noticed that yeah everything is uber expensive now. Everything is it has ri risen so much with respect to cost points. Okay, gas may be down a little bit. Uh, overall, from the year though, it's average still pretty high. Uh, it's just again everything has has taken a toll on the average consumer, average person in the country here, and it's people having difficulty making ends meet, and we're going to see that manifest. And now it's the wrong time of year. People spending money for holidays. You know, there's no stimulus. There's no you know incentive money coming to help anybody. And now we've got these situations with, with respect to freezing cold temperatures and people being snowed in, things like that. So everything's happening at the wrong time. That's going to cause a lot of harm to a lot of people. So um, having said that, so we this is, so in summary, what, what's going on? So obviously, we're getting set up for a major economic meltdown as per you know, the 15 reasons that we're going to have a massive economic meltdown. What does that mean? That means home prices will further drop in the future. If you've listened to any of my videos, you realize that I always talk about home prices uh, and, and you know all these predictions from not just people like myself, you know, talking heads on these channels. We're we're, we're talking, you know, on YouTube, we're talking financial analysts, uh, economists, you know, um, journalists who are actually good at what they do and aren't just regurgitating narratives. You know, um, a lot of people who look at statistics, things like that. The big players, the Moody's, the Goldman Sachs, the you know, um, Fitch Ratings, um, you know, Deloitte. So all these and other groups are all predicting. You know, um, John Burns Consulting. Okay, even Case Schiller, Robert Schiller's. You know, doesn't say much, but he's he, he when he does, it's you know he knows it's coming, right? So basically, we're going to have even a like we're in the correction mode right now. Everybody, it's correction mode for housing. When the foreclosures manifest and come out, that's where we're going to be pushed to crash territory. And quite frankly, um, you know, a lot of the discussion points were, well, you know, we won't have a foreclosure issue um, until we have job losses. Well, guess what? We're having job losses and we're having, you know, in information on the job market being stated incorrectly, which means it's way worse than it actually is. So it's happening, guys. Be prepared for it. So what are your opportunities in the future? Well, clearly, you can buy at the foreclosure auction. If that's something you want to do as an investor or as a, a buyer. Um, you know, go ahead. There, there'll be lots of opportunities. There's opportunities now and even more coming up in the future. Future, there's risks associated with that. You can go after the foreclosed properties, those that have already been foreclosed on. They're referred to as bank owned slash REO, real estate owned. So you can find those sometimes in the local MLS. You can find those through other sources. Don't forget, a lot of these lenders use third party auction or clearinghouse platforms where you can bid on them after they've already gone through their mortgage foreclosure. Short sales. Short sales will be a very popular thing coming up right now. I've talked about this for many months. And you know what? You would if you how can I put it? Many people connect with me who buy and sell property who want to learn or be in the business or help me run their short sell business. So that's my focus for the next year. It's going to be huge. Short payoffs, kind of like a short sell with some little twist to it. That'll be available subject to the mortgage. You've heard the term taking the property over subject to the mortgage. There'll be a lot of opportunities there. Why there's a lot of low. Uh, interest mortgage loans that were issued in 2018, 19, 20, 21 before the interest rates went up. And a lot of those people are going to have financial difficulties so they can be available uh, to take over. You know, uh, there's a special way of doing that. You can We can get it later on. Homeowner association, condo association foreclosures, okay? There are people who don't pay their HOA or their condo association bills for various reasons, and these groups, the HOA and condo associations, can actually foreclose on them. Those are great opportunities. They're also an indication of more problems behind the scenes, but a good way to control property. So that's interesting. Probate slash estate foreclosures. So we're going to have, we were already seeing an increase in probates across the board. A lot of them are going to have attached foreclosures uh, issues along with it. So those are like a double whammy. We've got to do a probate, but we're now we're facing a foreclosure. So a little more messing around, but we're seeing those increase because there has been a significant increase in mortality or fatality over the past couple of years due to what's happened in the world. Okay, you can pretty much guess. And then to, to finalize that, there's something called foreclosure surplus, surplus or overage. Okay, tongue twister. Foreclosure surplus or overage. That basically means if someone gets foreclosed on, and let's just say somebody buys their property at the auction for more than what was owed on the property, there's a surplus. 
and the homeowner is entitled to that surplus, but oftentimes they are not notified, nor do they know how to go about obtaining their surplus. And that's a, another niche industry where people can go and help them, you know, find that money and get that money, obviously, for a piece of the action, a fee. Very interesting concepts here. We expect that we'll be doing a lot more of that in the future as well, too. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things you have to look forward to this coming year. So that's the scoop, guys. So if you want to know more about um, what's going on in your neck of the woods uh, and, and all the stuff I just talked about, go to gethousingdata.com. That's gethousingdata.com. It's my affiliate link. Why do you want to hop on this? Well, the reason being is that these are you know potential deals. That list of eight things will all revolve around the foreclosure market, the distressed property market. So you can go to this. It's again, my foreclosure.com affiliate link. Go to this site. It's not much money. To, to join, you can see what's actually happening, get the addresses and the properties of what's going on in, in your neighborhood, okay? So check this out. Once again, um, you know, if you want more information, I'm, I'm launching my new program with some discounts right now, get in before the masses. I can't tell you guys enough, So I've talked about this for a couple of years now, all right? It will, it's happening, it's gonna happen, it's gonna hit hard, there'll be massive opportunity, but you gotta figure this out and figure it out and get in early before the ma I said the masses jump in because it, people are going to be going after this. Everybody and their uncle will be going after these properties because that's what happened in the last housing crisis. And we ran through that so we know how that's going to work. So connect with me. It's going to be a big year for foreclosures. All right. If you want to reach out, hit me up in my email. So once again, thank you for the views, likes, comments. Please share the video with your family and friends. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I look forward to speaking with you before the weekends. Thanks.